Hi guys, so I'm back with a new video and hopefully um, I'm kind of like in my how to say I'm kind of in another area so I hope the Wi-Fi and connection doesn't die on me but this time I'll be talking slightly louder so I hope all of you can hear me nice and clear so today um, the video will be about future normal hero awakenings Yes, we'll be looking at normal heroes only um, This is actually to benefit you guys who are actually uh, planning to You know, thinking about which normal hero you should awaken And how to allocate your resources, especially your Venus However, um, this is just to say that I am not sure how the global and Asia awakenings will turn out to be And you know, following the recent events of Roro and Chloe, I think we can safely say that um, the next few awakenings would probably be magic heroes. Well, I hope that will be the case because I don't see Roro being used in Arena a lot. And this could probably be due to the lack of magic heroes. Uh, useful magic heroes to support Chloe and herself and Yonhi. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. And so I'm using the Korean game and this is my Korean account. Um, I actually joined in March when they were giving out freebies. Oh no, yeah, March. When they were giving out freebies for their third anniversary. So yes, here I am. So we'll be looking at the codex today. So, as, okay, this is the White Wolf page, as, as you can see, there are two more White Wolves to be awakened and four more yet to be awakened in the Korean server. So, later we'll, we'll go into Soi and Fonggyan, so we're getting later. But for now, we'll focus on uh, the Earth Element, because there is only one Earth Element hero that is to be awakened, and that is Rook. Yes, he becomes a ferocious lion. In case you guys didn't know. So basically, um, for Rook's case, in our server, he, uh, he decreases the counter rate of all enemies by 50%. And I'm sorry, I cannot provide uh, text, uh, text on video at the moment. But I will try to get to that in future. And I will just briefly go through the goodness of Rogue in Korean server. However, this is not to say that we will adopt uh, everything as it is. Because I'm sure the GA, the Global Asia uh, moderators will change Rook to suit whatever is to come. And Rook, as well as the other Terra heroes, are way overdue. So, well, we still don't know when they will come out. So basically for the passive of Rook in our current GA is that he reduces counter rate only. And that is just one liner passive. And the rest, I'm sure we have seen Rook's javelin in Castle Rush. He inflicts quite a lot of damage, 180%, and decreases enemy's defense by 80% for 2 turns. Okay. As well as his shield, which reduces damage received. However, the Korean Rook is more of a tank. I would say definitely used in a tank meta. He actually uh, provides immunity to AoE damage for 3 turns, which is basically like soy. Actually, I'm not sure. Does the AoE apply to 5 men? Okay. I think it's 5 men, 5 men AoE, so it's basically like Soi and Da Qiao. And uh, he increases allies' math, physical and magical attack, so that's basically our Bai Jiao's effect. By 50% only, this one. Oh sorry. Passive, yes sorry. And he, is, he provides immunity to skill cooldown, which means that is our Mao Song. So we have a Mao Song effect with Rook. And the other two uh, other things that are more important to note is that this his javelin actually does two times of 300% damage and it 
pierces and always crits. So that is quite strong uh, for a tank because I guess he needs some offense. And for his shield, his shield effect actually grants 3000 HP to all allies for 4 turns. Okay, and it reduce, uh, increases block blocking chance by 40%. So this is definitely um, similar to our, what we, our Chloe has. But our Chloe only gets 1000. So uh, if we were to adopt Rook's 3000 HP, I think that would be a major leap forward in our meta. And that would mean that, uh, you know, he won't be coming so soon. Because what, from 1000 to 3000, I think... We will need some time and damage to get there. Okay, so that is for our Earth element, which we only have one. I would like to talk about the Light element, but this is a new hero that we do not have at the moment. She is called Hayong. Hayong, yes. And she is part of the Guild Alliance. And now this part of the story we do not have in the Global Asia server yet. And Hayong is actually a unit that is used in Garrida's Raid, uh, which we also do not have in the Global Asia server yet. So maybe it would not be so important to cover her now. But do note that we do have a light normal hero. Um, but that's, this, she's the only one left after Chloe. So, yep. Focus your light elements on Chloe. Okay, moving on. Let's move to the fire element. Now, for the fire element, we have Soy. Lovely, lovely Soy with a huge ego. Soy in the current, our current um, Aisha continent. I. I remember um, she was in the meta for some time because of her passive. She totally was Ray, yeah, in the past. However, she fell out after Liu Bu came on, so hopefully we'll see Soi back in some way. Okay, let me find something about Soi. Okay, Soi. In our current meta, provides immunity to 5-man target AoE for 3 turns. That is also the same in the Korean server. However, she also ha she has 5 Void Shields. And she gives lethal damage, increases lethal damage of allies on the back row by 40%. So as you can see, this actually makes her really useful in PvE. Um, your, such as your raid. Um, what else? Kasarash and Daily Dungeon maybe. So Saw so is actually a very useful character in the Korean server and hopefully hopefully she'll be as useful in our server. And I do like her as a PvE character because of her passive. So you know please keep it that way. Um and also you know she has that one arrow attack. Yeah, that actually in for currently for our soy she inflicts hundred eighty percent damage, but in the Korean version she inflicts six hundred fifty percent physical damage. That is a lot, and it pierces, and it activates lethal attacks. So it's really a lot of damage. Really good for PVE as well because most PVE are single targets. And then we have her eagle attack. Um, in the current, in our current game, it only inflicts damage, but here it actually re removes buffs. In Korea, it actually removes buffs, and it's always critical. So, you know, it's actually really useful, soy, because it removes all active buffs, which means it instantly kills zombies. Kind of like. Well, what our Da Chao has, immune, I mean, Korean soy basically encapsulates most of Da Chao's abilities, but, but buffs your team as well, and inflicts huge amount of damage. And her awakening actually resets cool, cooldown, and gives uh, your whole team 5 void shoots, which is, woo! Okay, really good, really good unit, and I hope 
she gets to keep much of a kid in、uh, when she comes over to our server, and I think her awakening won't be too far off because of because it seems like、uh, global Asia moderators want to you know finish the white wolves up to where they are. Okay, so hopefully we'll see her. Maybe I don't know. In two months, one month time, yeah. And hopefully, I don't know. Maybe she may be just a specialist for world boss. Who knows? And that will really suck. Okay, so next for our fire, our last, second and last fire hero, which is Bidam. Yes, Bidam gets an awakening, and a really good one too, if I'm not wrong. So let's、uh, go through what he is all about. He's actually in the Shards of Destruction searching group, as you can see, which is the same as Snipper, Juppy, Helena, Lee, Ariel. So in our game, he is the last one in that group. Three more in Korea, but we never know, know, know who, and we'll probably not get them till very, very much later. Now it's. It's the third year in Korea, and they are not even released. So, we'll probably we could expect Bidam sometime this year. Judging from how they are, Global Asia is trying to rush it, rush this group over. Yeah. Okay, so for Bidam, he's actually a PVP unit in Korea. He increases allies' damage. Oh wait, so for let me talk about our Bidam first. So currently, our Bidam he has increased speed attack by five. Yeah, I'm、um, not sure if that is gonna be still there because you know you might as well just add it to his speed, and he has three void shields. That is basically it. And then his other skills are basically there's a silencing skill and a piercing skill. However, for this Korean awakened Bidam, he has six void shields, whereas the normal has three, and he increases total damage and crit chance by forty percent. Total damage, which means he um has the karma effect, and he has the spike effect. Or we may call it the Ruri passive effect. So this is actually a two in one, which is really strong for our arena, for arena purposes. It saves you one unit, so you don't have to have a crit buffer, which I actually I think no nobody really uses, except now people are using Ruri in our meta, in our speed meta because of her passive, to destroy tank teams. Yeah. Okay, so then we have this arrow attack, which actually、um, has the effect. It actually has the effects、uh, of ballista. So every third attack of this skill inflicts two thousand. Inflicts two thousand fixed damage and reduces opponent counter chance by sixty percent. So that is kind of like a Yuri and a Ballista effect. Yeah, and it also hits sixty percent two times. And then we have this other effect, which basically reduces buff duration two times. So he does not silence anymore. Yeah, and basically his awakening skill is also just a crazy penetration, heavy damage attack. Okay, sorry about that. Had some discussion with my dad. Anyway, so as I was saying, um, yeah. So basically, he is re-、uh, just a really strong, you know, damage dishing unit in Korea. 
Not sure what he would become in our server as usual, considering um, fire, uh, water elements, water heroes, magic heroes are, you know, are in the hype right now. But, but I can say that, you know, in future we may have fire units who counter magic heroes directly, and Bidam may just be that unit. So maybe we'll have Bidam having, you know, increase. A uh, damage inflicted on magic heroes or in uh, inflicts hundred percent more physical damage on magic heroes. We know we never know. And I don't wanna give NM any ideas. <laughs> so yes. Okay, so now we are moving on to the to the dark element. Yes, I'm saving the water element for last because it is the height. And it is something you need to listen to. So, let's talk about Nox. Now everyone has been waiting for Nox to come out in our server because he he changes the meta. He will change the meta considerably. I would say because of the emphasis on death. Currently, our Nox is useless as well. He is a Terra unit, by the oh no, <laughs> no he is not a Terra unit. What am I saying? He is an Asgar unit from the World Seven, and when he awakens, he'll be in the question mark category along with Ka Karin. Still not sure their story, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so what his passive is basically almost the same. Okay, he. Reduces incoming damage by 60%. Our normal Nox is 50%. Awaken Nox is 60%. And he increases allies' status ailment debuff chance by 20%. Which means he increases your team's uh, capability to inflict CC or debuff by 20%. Okay? Basically, very, uh, very tuned to the death meta. Death team kind of uh, passive, and then we have others like the first skill. Basically, he has a chance to apply death, and you know how death works. First, you cut the HP of the target by half, and then you second turn, hundred percent. And then. He has a cool increased cooldown skill. This skill, second skill. Targets all enemies with two times fifty percent reduced buff by two turns, and inflicts cooldown by twenty percent. Uh, twenty seconds. I mean, sorry. So as you can see, and his awakened skill also applies death debuff to all enemies. Yeah, basically, it's just a. Everyone has death kind of awakened skill. So you see that death meta is really strong because it stacks on and it kills you instantly. No matter how many does it hit void? I can't remember. No it doesn't. It doesn't pierce. Uh, it doesn't go through it reduces void count if it procs, but it does not kill you if you have a void yeah but it breaks through immunity so it pierces so death meta is actually was is actually i i would say that it has a very considerable history in the career meta because of chris's awakening which we will get pretty soon i think so i'm looking at an august date so yeah just prepare your Chris's guys. Okay, so Chris, and then we have Nox, and you know, maybe Espada will come back if the magic meta is still around because Espada will be a huge, huge, huge asset to the dev team against a magic team. And then we have Evan, who will definitely be in the dev team. And if you give Evan a CC, dev CC, um, you know, Death CC accessory that will be hugely beneficial for a Death team. 
Of course, you need to give Nox his death accessory so he can just kill. Just kill! Death is crazy. Next, we have Chancellor. And according to a fellow YouTuber, K Gaming, I'm sure most of you know him, he deems Chancellor as the 8th knight. Or maybe the ninth knight after Vanessa. But anyway, yes, so Chancellor has a huge, huge impact when he came out in Korea Meta. And he is still used today. Um, being a very, very strong tank PvP unit. Okay, so he has Reflect. He has reduced damage taken by 40%. He has Reflect, and he also revives, okay? Not only that, he has huge damage because he inflicts double 50% and he deals extra 30% of target's max HP. So that is, hmm, really a lot. And then he has a Remove All Active Buff. Additionally, reducing enemies' defense by 50%. So that is basically a destruction of zombies and as well as breaking down the breaking down the your opponent's wall. Basically allowing you to hit them a lot more. And for a tank team, I think this will change the tank team's ability to do damage. So you know maybe if our Chancellor keeps this kit he can our uh, tank teams may have a chance to actually deal greater amount of damage you know and his awakening skill um does fixed damage and reduce buff by three turns reducing buff by three turns is huge firstly targeting three targets with two thousand percent fixed damage mm, I would say it's alright. Alright, yeah, it's alright. But we don't really know yet. Because I think there is a unit that reduces fixed damage by a certain percent. But I'm not sure who that is. Yes, I'm not sure who that is. So, yeah. What I can see Chancellor keeping would probably be his. Ability to remove active buffs and also reducing opponent's defense. So basically, he is a support tank unit that buffs your team. Oh uh, no, that actually causes a lot of debuff for your opponent's team. Yes, while keeping himself very safe due to his reflect, due to his revive. So Useful unit. He looks really good, by the way, after he awakens. Okay, so next we have Nerja. Love her. Love this look. So badass. And I can't wait to awaken her, like, seriously. But I think it'll be next year. Just to. Just for you to know, Nurja actually has to awaken after Yushin. Yushin. So, you know, okay, we'll talk about her story later when we go through the magic team, the magic uh, units. So, Nurja, I think she is a PvP unit sometimes uh, in the, when she was out, but now she can be used for PvE in Garage's Raid because. Her basic attack, okay, her normal attack reduces the enemy's uh, awakening skill bar by 10 seconds. And this is actually used in Garage's Raid because he charges his awakening skill bar. Yeah? So Nurture actually buffs your team's defense and she continues to have her awesome reflect passive. Now her first skill. I think I should have shown the animation when I was talking about the skill. Anyway, her oh okay, sorry. So basically, for her tsunami, she does shuffle the opponent and she also reduces buff timer 
for us, the jab pierces with this skill, but in Korea, no, it doesn't. And then for this, this in Korea, it pierces and it targets the two enemies with highest defense. So you see, this is another um, slightly more a, a unit used in tank team, but it actually helps the tank team to defeat and uh, to target another tank team's high defense heroes you know so and that skill which we for us supposed to stun right G in global asia it stuns but for this it pierces and it crits double hundred seventy percent so that is actually very very big damage on the two enemies with high de highest defense which we will definitely have problem bringing down so Nurja is here to help so yeah a tank support unit that has a skill that counters other tanks other strong defense heroes interesting right not sure how will she be in our meta but yeah we will be getting her that soon and then for the last one for the last of uh, uh that element normal hero is Aragorn and we'll definitely not be getting him soon and he is a P strictly a PvE unit in uh in Korea so I will not be talking much about him since it's really really far off. He just awakened maybe I don't know four months ago. Yeah. Okay, now let's move on to the most important part of the video, that is the magic. Now, Sylvia and Velika are most probably, probably going to be awakened next, in the next 2 to 3 weeks. So, if there's anything you want to take away from this video, it is from this part onwards. Okay? Now, for Sylvia, she is the game's first magic zombie and yes i've been wanting a magic zombie since gipara but i realized there's been no such thing so sylvia is the first magic zombie she increases all enemies damage taken by 50 percent and that is what our ruri our awakened ruri has currently okay and that is uh so she may have the potential to be the Ruri in the magic team okay she may have the potential next in her passive she actually increases her magic attack depending on the percentage of her HP that is lost yes yeah, so there is an interesting passive which none of our uh, global Asia units have at the moment so I'm not sure how this affects with her zombie. Maybe in her zombie mode, she'll have insane amount of magic attack, given that it's technically zero HP, right? So yeah, we'll see. Okay, so for our enemy, uh, for our Sylvia currently, she uh she's being used as a PVE hero because of her skill that decreases enemy damage by 80% and then another skill which decreases enemy defense by 50% now these are both Rachel's um, Phoenix skill so she is actually the uh, people call her the poor man's Rachel okay but in Korea I believe she was actually used in arena do correct me if I'm wrong because I'm really not sure if Korea Arena history. So her first skill, this skill, uh, it inflicts double 140% magic damage, always crits and pierces. So she's this is heavy damage. And then for this one, it decreases enemies total damage by 50%. That's what uh normal oh uh, yeah. Yeah, in decrease total damage of enemy by 50% and reduce buff by 2 turns. Reduce enemy's total damage by 50%. So that basically 
can stack with row row. Okay, can stack with row row. Row row reduces piercing damage by forty percent. So if we have a Sylvia that reduces total damage by fifty percent, now that is gonna be really huge for our magic team because that because with Chloe, with Roro and Sylvia, we we can have a very strong and hard to take down magic meta coming soon if she keeps this of course and very lastly her awakening skill great animation she targets four enemies with 400 percent magic damage and what Oh, depending on how many enemies have fallen, it inflicts 50% more to the remaining heroes. And okay, um, this part. In Korea, she actually poisons for 600% damage. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Yes, that is actually Roro's, Roro's current uh, skill. So, I don't think she will definitely, we will definitely not be keeping this. So, I think... Uh, Sylvia, Awaken Sylvia will have an entirely different pet, uh, awakening skill. Nonetheless, I hope the only thing I hope she keeps is her zombie, zombie state, and I hope she's a PVP unit, cause we really need some PVP units that support magic heroes. Probably either reduce damage taken, uh, for magic heroes. Or, you know, for increased defense of magic heroes, something like that. Yeah? And I, I, I do foresee that the, up, the next few, uh, if there are magic heroes awakening, probably Velika and Sylvia, they will probably have effects that buff magic heroes specifically. Okay, so Velika, yay! Velika is a very famous unit since the early days, and... You know, she re we know that she's used in raid, reducing magic damage by 50%, and she has two AoE, which are pretty weak. However, in Korea server, Velika is incredibly useful. Yeah? She can she keeps her reduction in magic damage. She reduces enemies magic that what? She reduces enemies' magical damage by 40%. Okay. She reduces incoming magic damage by 50%. Okay, I'm not sure about this translation. I don't know why it sounds so repeated, but it feels like it's a 90% reduction in magic damage. I'm not very sure. I'm not very sure. Okay, but in any case, she increases allies' awakening gauge rate, fill up rate. Useful, very useful in PVE especially. Uh, could possibly speed up Shane's uh, awakening bar, considering considering that Shane only has one skill and it takes quite some time. Okay, so let's look at her animation. I think it's the same. This meteor. Target all enemies with 100% magic damage. And if there are less enemies to attack, uh, the damage increases by 60% and it pierces. And then we have this. Targets 4 enemies, increase enemies cooldown by 55 seconds. Crap. 55 seconds and it always crits as well. And then her awakening skill is actually a support skill which definitely I believe she will keep in her as in she will keep the nature that it is a support, support skill but I don't the, maybe the effect won't be the same. Yeah she amplifies allies damage by 100% for 10 times. So this is like Jupi's awakening skill. Increases her physical attack if I'm not wrong. By 100%, yeah? So for Velika, it, uh, it's about increasing in damage. Not sure if we'll have that because that will directly... 
Hmm. Okay, we may have that. Uh, so as to reduce the need to use Lina's our Lina's uh first skill. But you know we never know. I hope Velika will be. I think for me personally, I think Velika will be a raid specialist. Yeah, somehow I think she will continue doing her raid job because Lina is not meant to be in raid, but Lina can be used in raid, okay? Yeah, so I think Velika will take on that raid specialist when she is released. Okay, next. We have Fong Yan, and Fong Yan will come after Soi. Do note, Fong Yan will come after Soi. Because his awakening has to do with Soi's awakening. Because of his love for her, or something like that. So, Fong Yan's first skill. Let's see. So, this is his first skill. Similar animation, I guess. Uh. Okay, sorry. He's passive, he's passive. He's immune to all damage for 4 turns, okay? He increases his lethal by 70%. Awesome for DPS. Seriously awesome. And he reduces his skill countdown by 10 seconds for each speed and counter attack. Which is similar to what we have because um, our Fong Yan has gone through a revamp. I'm not sure about Korean server. But our Fong Yan uh, does have the skill cooldown. And yeah, that's about it. And his immunity as well. Okay, so. Uh, okay. So next, his first skill tar targets uh, one enemy with 400% magic damage, ignores defense. Now note that in Korea it's 400% but our actual Fong Yin, our Fong Yin in Global Asia server is already dealing 600% and it's also ignore defense. So if he awakens, he'll definitely be way more buff than the Korean Fong Yin. And this skill, which you are familiar with, in Korea it targets all enemies, AoE, 100% and if there's less enemies to attack, the skill damage increases by 50%. Mm. For ours, also very different. Uh, increases the damage by 20% each time enemy dies. And it boosts his crit rate by 80% for 2 turns because it's a self buff skill, remember? And it decreases enemy's damage by 40%. So it's a self buff and a team protecting skill for ours. So I foresee that our Fong Yan will be incredibly strong when he awakens and, he, and note, he will definitely, definitely be a world boss specialist Okay, definitely Because, I mean what else, what else is Global Asia mod trying to do? And as for his amazing awakening skill In Korea, he targets the enemy 1000 magic attack Reduce the target's block rate by 70%, increases his crit damage by 100%. Now this I can see foresee happening. Uh, and maybe he'll get even more buff in a certain world boss mode. Pro probably for Stormwing. Okay? Probably for Stormwing. Okay, so we have three more heroes to cover and we're done. I'm sorry if this video is taking much longer than expected. Uh, I'm trying my best to, you know, cover as much as I can and show you guys that there are certain things that you need to focus on. Yeah, so this is Sebastian, a new unit which we do not have as well. He's supposedly Velika's husband. Yes. He is a DPS. He only has one skill. This skill. Uh, and this one skill targets all enemies with 50% magic damage. And depending on the number of uh, enemies down, 
150% is more, 150% more is inflicted. Okay, his awakening skill targets three enemies with 400% magic and increases his lethal by 80% for six turns. So definitely, uh, I would say definitely a a skill catered for a DPS because his passive actually. He is meant to be a castle rush specialist in Korea. So I don't think he will be that castle rush specialist in Korea. Um, I think he will be, however, a new Mo Wang. A new Mo Wang or that crown prince specialist in future. Okay. So I say again, I think he will be a new Mo Wang or Dark Crown Prince Specialist in future because, you know, GA Global Asia Moderators want to diversify the DPS units so we'll probably have a DPS for each world boss eventually. Moving on, we have Yushin, Yushin, however you pronounce it. He is a corrupted sage. Sadly, he looks awesome though. So his animations are totally changed and he has 5 void shields. He increases magic attack by 60%. So it basically has a rain effect. Okay, he has a rain effect. And he grants immunity to reflect damage. He targets this skill, targets uh, 4 enemies with 2 times 100% and reduce buff uh, reduce buff by 2 turns. And then there's this one. Targets 3 enemies with 100, 2 times 100% as well. And he has high chance to shock. I think it's electrify. High chance to electrify and pierce. So he, yay, he finally has a CC that he deserves. And then he has this awakening skill. Always crits in our defense. Targets all enemies with 2 times 120%. Definitely a nuker uh, kind of damage dishing kind of awakening skill, which is very much welcome. Okay, so this is Yushin, beautiful hero. Definitely gonna awaken him when he comes out. Lastly, lastly, we have the last DPS. The final DPS of Korean server at the moment. She is meant for Garrida's Raid. Okay, she is meant for Garrida's Raid, which we, which we do not have. And why, uh, looking at her skill, you'll realize why I earlier mentioned about Bidam having a specific increase in damage towards a certain type of hero because her passive says increase damage to fire physical enemies by 50% because Garridus is a physical type of enemy so definitely her passive increases her lethal by 50% and her passive has a skill cooldown by 10 seconds for every basic attack okay so we have a Fong Yan thing going on as well so definitely a, again the increase in lethal is definitely a DPS worthy uh, character so her this skill targets one enemy with 600% magic and always crits word definitely DPS next targets one enemy with 500% and she heals herself by 20% of the damage dealt. What DPS does that? Okay. And lastly, inflicts 1000% magic damage, increased counter chance by 60%. And this skill always crits as well. So you see, a very, very, very well built DPS. Everything is covered for you. Huh? Okay. Crit is covered for you. Lethal chance is covered for you. You just need to boost a little bit more lethal for her. So again, she will not be coming out so soon in our server, so you don't have to worry about her, but I think she could still be a DPS for Garrida's Raid when we get it. Or you know, we never know if Sebastian will become the specialist for Garrida's Raid, but you know, all these we really don't know. And, but we'll see, we'll see. If Garrida's Raid, uh, Garrida's Raid is, is really launched in Global Asia, I believe they will release a hero along with that mode or maybe one to two weeks after that mode to for you for you to 
awaken that hero, you know, because they want you to awaken that hero. Okay, so um, I think that will be all. So bottom line is, there will be four heroes. Four okay, there will be four no heroes that you will want to take note of. Sylvia. Okay, Sylvia. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Sylvia. Velika. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Soy. Okay, Sylvia, Velika, Soy. And the Terra Trio, which is Rook. Uh, Rook. Chancellor. And Nox. You could also think about beat them. Okay, so there are seven, seven heroes which I foresee will be coming out within the year, this year, within the next three months, three to four months. Okay, that will be Sylvia Velika for magic, Soy Bidam for fire, Rook for earth, Chalnox and Chancellor for dark. I will leave a link in the description for you to check the list. So don't worry, uh, it's, it's on a reddit thread. So that will be all for this video. I hope it helps you a lot. See ya!